Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day and happy Monday to you. Uh, we're continuing in Mark chapter 12. And uh, let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered what heaven is going to be like? Do you, do you think about eternity and what it's going to consist of and how it's going to feel and all of that? Uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, you probably have. Well, today we're looking at a passage where the, the Sadducees, uh, a group of religious leaders who did not believe in the resurrection of the dead, who just believed you lived, you died, that was it. That was over. They came to Jesus because they thought they had the perfect problem that even he couldn't solve, and they would trap him in his answer. And so they came to him. Uh, again, they didn't believe in the resurrection. They said, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, here's the problem. There was a man who had a, a wife, and, and they were childless, and he died. And the law says that if, you know, your, your brother has a wife and, and he dies childless, uh, then you're supposed to take his wife as your wife and produce an heir, and so on and so on. And they said, well, he had six brothers, and each one of them married this woman, and none of them had a child, and then finally she died. And in heaven, whose wife is she going to be? And they thought they had him. They were sitting back smug and like, okay, you know, tell us your answer because I don't think there is one. And here's what Jesus said, beginning in verse 24. Jesus said to them, is this not the reason you were wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. <laughs> I just love Jesus. He's, he's just clear. He's like, hey, you guys are ignorant, both of the scriptures and of God. You, you just are clueless. Um, For when they rise from the dead... They neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the bush how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are wrong. Actually, he says you're quite wrong. You're exceedingly wrong. You're just totally wrong. You've completely missed the boat on this. So uh, Jesus is saying, look, there is a resurrection from the dead, period. That's our hope in Christ. And if you're a follower of Jesus, if you actually believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, I mean, this is personal. He paid for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then you have that hope of heaven. It's not kind of like a hope like, well, I hope I go to heaven. No, it's a hope, it's a certainty, it's a guarantee from God that when you die, you're going to wake up in eternity and you're going to have a new body and you're going to be perfectly healthy and whole forever and ever and ever. So if you go to heaven, if you're a follower of Jesus, you go to heaven, then you're going to be completed perfectly as God's creation. You're going to be the way God intended you to be before uh, sin came into this world. Okay, so you're going to be perfect. You're going to be completed. Um, when we get to heaven, we're going to be servants of God. In other words, uh, it's not going to be us sitting around being waited on by the angels as they bring us another you know, plate of food from the buffet. We get to be the servants of God. That doesn't change from this world to next. Right? The Apostle Paul always identified himself as a servant of Jesus, a servant of the living God. We're servants of the living God. So we're going to be serving in, uh, in heaven. Uh, in other words, we're not going to be waited on. We're going to be the waiters. And some of you might be going, what's my job going to be? Well, think about how I feel. I mean, there's not gonna, they're not going to need any preachers in heaven. Jesus is there. We're not going to compete with him. Who's going to listen to us when, when Jesus is there himself? So I kind of figure as, you know, as pastors, we'll probably get to be the ones cleaning the toilets. Don't feel bad because if we have to clean the toilets, it won't stink. It'll smell like roses or chocolate or fresh baked cookies or something. Uh, anyway, so we're going to be servants of God. And, and here's the thing. In heaven, you're going to love everyone better than you love anyone in this world. This is incomprehensible, but I'm going to say it again. You're going to love everyone in heaven better than you love anyone in this world. So the, the Sadducees thought they had the problem with this guy and wives and whose wife is he going to be? And, and Jesus goes, you don't get it. You're not going to relate the same way in heaven as you do on earth. It, on earth, marriage gives us a glimpse of the, the love relationships, at least, you know, that's the way God designed it of what those relationships in heaven can be like. The, the fact that there's trust, that there's uh, uh, you know, compassion, that there's closeness, that there's no fear in all of that. Uh, and so, but we're not gonna have marriage uh, because we're not gonna need to understand what love was intended to be. And, and yes, some of you are going, what about my loved ones? Will I see my loved ones? Yes, you will, but you'll love them better in heaven than you ever did on earth. 
but then you'll love the people that you've never met in heaven better than you loved anyone on earth. It's, it's kind of crazy. And here's the thing, you're also going to be completely satisfied with eternal life. There's not going to be any envy. You're not going to be looking around at other people going, how come they got more crowns than I did? Or how come they get a better position to serve in? There's not going to be any pride, not going to be any jealousy, any greed. I also believe, uh, because of Scripture, Revelation 22, that, that heaven is going to be dynamic. There's going to be seasons of change uh, because the tree of life bears different fruit every month. There's, there's going to be growth and learning. You see, we're going to be dynamic. It's, going to be, it's not going to be static, boring existence. I also believe our relationship with creation will be radically different because uh, Isaiah 11 talks about how the lion and the lamb will lay down together and babies will play with cobras. Uh, kind of freaks some of you out. You're like, I don't want to play with snakes. I'm like, but you won't be afraid of them. It's, it's a whole different relationship. In other words, heaven is beyond our comprehension. It's going to be so cool, so dynamic, so wonderful that everything in this world will be forgotten. It'll be left behind, including all the pain, sorrows, and sufferings that you have right now. In fact, the hope of heaven is what fuels us uh, when days are difficult. Because like the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, 18, I do not consider this present suffering worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us in Christ Jesus. That glory, it's heaven. Jesus affirmed that heaven is real, that the res resurrection of the dead is real, and we get to participate in it because for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have what? Eternal life. I hope that encourages your heart today, and I pray that God blesses you. Have a great day, Calvary.